in abstract algebra a subgroup of a group is said to be a silo p subgroup if the order of that subgroup is p where p is any prime number while silo second theorem tells us that any two silo p subgroups of a finite group are conjugate silo's third theorem tells us about the number of silo p subgroups that a finite group contains before getting into a textbook statement of this theorem let's take a look at a few examples Let's take the symmetric group S3. The order of this group is 6. These are the different subgroups of S3. There are three subgroups of prime order 2 and one subgroup of prime order 3. In other words, S3 contains three silo 2 subgroups and one silo 3 subgroup. Let's break it down even further. The number of silo 2 subgroups is 1 plus a multiple of 2 which divides the order of the group while the number of 3 subgroups is 1 plus a multiple of 3 which again divides the order of the group let's take another example the group of integers modulo 12 here's a list of all the subgroups of this group this group contains one subgroup of prime order 2 and one subgroup of prime order 3 in other words this group contains one silo 2 subgroup and one silo 3 subgroup so the number of silo 3 subgroups is 1 plus a multiple of 3 which divides the order of the group while the number of silo 2 subgroups is 1 plus a multiple of 2 which again divides the order of the group and well This is exactly what Silo's third theorem is all about. It tells us that for any prime number p, the number of Silo p subgroups of a finite group is one plus a multiple of p, and it must divide the order of that group. If a group contains a normal subgroup of any prime order, say p, then the number of Silo p subgroups of that group must be exactly one. Similarly, if a group contains exactly one silo p subgroup for any prime number p, then that subgroup must be a normal subgroup of the given group. Since every subgroup of an abelian group is a normal subgroup, so an abelian group contains exactly one silo p subgroup for any prime number p.